Uh, the clock shows pretty darn close to 6.30 or basically 6.30 right now. So ask for the roll to be called, please. Petrie? Present. Schrader? Shore? Present. Weibel? Here. Berkson? Here. Harper? And Esri? Here. Thank you. And we do have a quorum. Um, would ask um, if there's anything to be added to the agenda. I know we are pulling the addendum. Um, and if that's okay with anybody, is there a motion to approve? So moved. moved by Mr. Pye, seconded by Ms. Berkson. Uh, all in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed? Thank you. That passes. Uh, we'll move on to approval of minutes for the ELEC committee meeting from September 3rd, 2015. So moved by Pies, seconded by Ms. Berkson. Any comment, comments, corrections? Mm -hmm. Seeing none, all in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed, nay. Thank you, that passes. Uh, I believe there's no public participation tonight. Uh, communications, I guess the only communication I had was about Stan um, not being here. Don't know if anybody else has any communications. Well, and then about Kay's mother passing away too. Sorry to hear about that. Uh, move on then to section... Seven, for information only, um, we have A, enforcement update for 1101 Carroll Avenue, Urbana. Are you taking that, John? Yeah, I put a photo at each table of the property at 1101 Carroll. Uh, all of the demolition work is done. Uh, it looks great. Uh, we haven't received all of the documents uh, or a request for payment yet, but all the work has been done for a while, and it went really well thanks to a good contractor. So just wanted to give you that update. Ms. Petrie. Um, is the cost what you had anticipated? Um, actually, the, the on the second bid, we, we got an even lower cost than we had the first time. <laughs> so um, it was great. 13750 was the final. Oh. Any other questions? Okay, thanks for that update, John. Uh, move on then to the other information only. Uh, B, the countywide residential electronics collections. And is Ms. Monty going to speak to that? Hi, I distributed a summary of the collection results for the October 10th collection. Nearly three, 53 tons were collected in four hours on October 10th at Parkland College from an estimated 1,200 vehicles. So 70% of that total consisted of televisions. <coughs> and presently, there is no other option to collect televisions larger than 32 inches in diameter here in Champaign County other than these collections. With the changes to the legislation uh, that are effective January 2016. The local recycling coordinators are becoming more and more interested in pursuing options that don't involve a one-day collection. So um, we're, we're looking at that and we'll report to you if there are any feasible options that we can identify um, probably in January. Okay, thank you, Susan. Um, Ms. Petrie. Susan, uh, could you just give us a bit of description? Who are some of the other coordinators? Are these other communities, other counties who are working together? Right. The local, local government coalition includes Village of Savoy, City of Champaign, City of Urbana, Champaign County. And at present, those are the local governments that participate. Parkland College is a sponsor. And, of course, the Champaign County Probation and Court Services Without their manpower, we couldn't really accomplish these collections. Anyone else have any comments or questions about the electronics collection? 
Okay, seeing none, we will then move on to our action items. Under eight, items to be approved by ELUC. We have A, re proposal regarding comprehensive update of the Champaign County Solid Waste Management Plan. And I guess we need a motion first on that. So moved. Moved by Ms. Petrie, seconded by Ms. Berkson. Questions, comments, or did you want to speak to this first? Well, or, it's um, timed to this uh, comprehensive update would be timed to be consistent with the required five-year update. And hopefully by 2017, some changes at the state level will have been considered and, and hopefully passed and acted, uh, which would provide additional resources to a county at a, at a minimum. Uh, one item under discussion uh, by a task force that I mentioned in this memo is to reconsider the entire hierarchy of materials management uh, to develop a state plan with a toolkit available to counties so that um, the county solid waste management kind of activities could be better coordinated, those kind of things. So um, hopefully things will happen by 2017. Ms. Petrie. Yeah, um, a, a couple of, well, actually probably one clarification question. Since this really uh, doesn't need action until 2017, help me appreciate um, why we are thinking about it now. And uh, some of that relates to page seven, that paragraph, next to next step. Well, the 2015 RPC and county work plan uh, included a work item to make a proposal to ELUC with regard to update of the solid waste management plan. So that the LRMP implementation schedule divided the task into make a proposal to ELUC about the update so that you had a, an appreciation of the scope of services under consideration and uh, so that you can understand that this is not something we, you would need to consult with out of the RPC, for example. So you have a, an understanding of what's being proposed. And then part two of that is to actually go ahead with the update. And in um, spring of 2016, you would receive here at ELUC our initial proposal for the 2017 work plan. So it, it's just uh, in advance of that, yes. It, it's a two-step process, the way the LRMP implementation schedule laid it out. Okay, so is this, it says this is for approval tonight. Is that it, or is it just mostly an information session now, and then mid-2016, we'll see the solid document? Well, you'll see the same thing that you're seeing tonight as part of a proposed 2017 work plan uh, proposal in in April and that's a separate item this tonight is just for you to accept and place on file or approve the scope of the services being proposed okay so I made a motion so we could have a discussion but it seems that maybe it's more appropriate for this to be placed on file and I would be willing to withdraw my motion if Others think that's the best step. Mr. Shore. I think part of the point here is for planning purposes for like the RPC to know what the will of the county board or at least this committee is so that they have some direction in planning 2017. So I think it is appropriate for us to approve this. Well, it isn't the RPC that's doing it. It's, it's within the contract we have uh, with Susan through the RPC, but it's not the RPC who's doing it. So this is just basically an informational aspect and we're not taking final action on it. So I don't, I guess I'm having a hard time appreciating an action item as much as I could see it on files and information item. I can interject that. I feel that I've presented the proposal to ELUC and that's part of the work plan prerogative here so that if you do choose to accept it and place it on file, that's fine. 
it, you'll see it again in the 2017 proposal. Uh, so I will withdraw my motion. That's fine. So you'd rather see us just accept it and replace it on file. I have no problem with that. And it doesn't sound like Ms. Motti does. Do you have a problem being as being the second? Or the, Ms. Bergson, just check with you. Okay. Any other questions, comments? And if not, we will accept and place that on file. Okay. We will then move on to the update regarding options to limit types of type of coolants, types of coolants used in closed loop system wells. And if we have options, I guess maybe we should have a discussion er, first. So do you wanna speak towards this? Sure, this action tonight that is requested of ELUC is to consider making a recommendation to the County Board of Health for them to consider an amendment to the Champaign County Health Ordinance containing a restriction on use of type of coolants in a closed loop well systems, geothermal wells. So you saw this um, back in September, and at that time we, we left it with some questions about um, advice that perhaps uh, the county did have authority and that um, there were some questions to follow up on uh, with regard to that. And um, we were told at that time in September that the state, Illinois Department of Public Health was gonna move forward with some proposed adjustments to the um, JCAR, the rules, administrative rules for the state with regard to these um, restrictions on geothermal wells with regard to coolants, types of coolants used. So that was all up in the air back in September and I've received some de definite information since then so I thought I'd provide you this update. Uh, we did receive information back from our assistant state's attorney that yes, the county um, likely does have the authority and um, Regardless of what the county chooses to do, uh, it's very possible that the county proceed forward with this proposal to limit the types of coolants uh, and submit a proposal to the Illinois Department of Public Health for approval, and then finding out whether the Illinois Department of Public Health will actually approve that, and then moving forward to enact changes at the county level. And that essentially is what Macon County did uh, back in like a year, a year ago from now. And in January, they ended up adopting their ordinance that restricts types of coolants. Uh, apparently IDPH, Illinois Department of Public Health approved their proposed changes. And now the Macon County, as of January 2015, has had enacted that change to their health ordinance. So Champaign County could take a similar route in that regard. So, uh, and then we found out from the Illinois Department of Public Health that they're stalled in their proposed amendment that they had considered to move forward and that uh, there's no immediate plan to bring that forward. Um, Mr. Johnson from the Illinois Department of Public Health indicated um, there's a lot of controversy in that he works with the closed loop well contractors and water well contractors licensing boards and they're at a pretty much a standstill. And you saw their proposal was to essentially remove the most toxic substance as a coolant, ethylene glycol, but to retain methanol and ethanol. And methanol and ethanol are largely considered to be toxic. So you saw then uh, the proposal below, uh, based on discussions uh, by ELUC back in September that water is often used just to include water and a mixture of water with the uh, food grade propylene glycol. So um, that's the proposal at this time. Yeah, I just clarify the proposed draft amendment is on page two, or actually page 10 of our, our um, packet uh, with the underlined for all the members. Yep, Ms. Petrie. Then uh, um, I move, uh, to put in place uh, Mr. DeThorne's uh, suggestion. It's on page nine, it's number two. And uh, vote on the wording and then send it to IDPH for approval and, and F approval vote to enact. 
May I interrupt? Yes. Only that the, your action tonight would be a recommendation to the County Board of Health because they are the party that would enact or make that proposal to IDPH, Illinois Department of Public Health. I'm more than willing to help that board move okay. forward. Yeah, the, there to the County Health, that's what's on page 10. Right. Yeah, so I don't know if anybody wants to move that wording or want to dis wants to discuss the wording. Um, any change it? Right. Or, the motion is true. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Ms. Burson. So, Mr. Pius. Weibel. Thank you. Okay, so John Schrader. I, I just have a question, a general general question about some of the, the wording in particular, I guess, um, when it comes to fluids that are considered toxic, um, I believe EPA used to consider milk as toxic and, and therefore any spills would be hazardous. Um, I saw with that, with that, no, it is serious. Um, and uh, apparently Cass Sunstein uh, takes credit for eliminating that um, burdensome. And then he adds about 9,000 pages worth of new <coughs> rules and regulations. Um, but being that said, I can't understand why ethanol is considered toxic um, since it is basically a fermentation of sugar and starches. Um, and basically it's, it's ethanol is made from in particular grains um, and yeast and water essentially. Um, so I'm not exactly sure why ethanol should be included as one of those that should be included in, as banned. Um, the other ones I don't have a problem with, but um, you might think I might be a little biased as a corn farmer, but <clears throat> I'll, use, uh, I'll freely admit that there may be a little bias. But still, I mean, I think all of us who went to college can understand uh, um, how toxic maybe a product like Everclear could be um, because that's almost straight ethanol, basically. So, um, and I don't remember anybody dying um, from that. Um, I'm not saying dulls too much, which any kind of medicine you take today has been through rigorous tests through the FDA and could kill you if it had not been through the testing to figure out what dosage you can stand your body. So, anyway, I digress. I'm sorry, but I, uh, long story short, short story long, whatever. I, I'd, I'd rather pull ethanol off there. And if I need amendment to do so, I'd make a motion to do so. Is there a second to the amendment to, to the pull the ethanol out? Or that? I, I don't have a very strong case against ethanol other than all of the materials I read included it as a, under a list of toxic substances. Uh, this, the, the concern is contamination of groundwater and if there's any risk to that would be one motivating factor in including it as potentially harmful to groundwater. Ethanol is easily dispensed quickly. That grain alcohol dis disperses quickly. It does not have extended residue and once exposed uh, dissipates rather quickly too. So I, I understand why it's called a toxic. Who made that list up? Did I miss that? I, I do have that in my folder and I don't have the source before me. But if it's in women's underground meat and goes down into the water table, it never is exposed. It's, it's not exposed, but it's easily diluted. And the loop systems don't have like hundreds of thousands of gallons in them as opposed to a well, which can have hundreds of thousands of thousands of gallons in them, so it'll be easily dispensed. And if someone has a loop system that doesn't loop anymore, they realize that it's been 
leaching or leaking, then probably if their air conditioning or if their heating doesn't work, then they'll quickly figure out why. But in the meantime, if they drink their water from their well, they might get pretty happy and uh, wonder why they're <laughs> loopy and get picked up for DUI. When all they can say to the officer is, I haven't had anything to drink but tap water from home. <laughs> so I, I jest. I mean, I make jest. But I, I just can't. I, I don't understand why it's there. Well, there, there could be a way that the concentration of ethanol would be controlled. Here, an early draft of the Illinois Department of Public Health changes indicated that they were considering using it in concentrations of 20% or less, for example. So maybe something like that. But um, if you'd like, this could come back to you with more definitive rationale for the harmful aspects of both ethanol or use of it in a particular concentration, or you can make the recommendation and assume that the County Board of Health will address those issues. I, you know, I, I guess I don't have a second to that, so... Um. I, I'd want to, I mean, we don't have the pedal to the metal on this stuff, so I want to defer this to to the November meeting then. That's a motion. When would it be due then? What, pardon me? December. December? December. We're already this in November. This is November. <laughs> <laughs> Until I've been cooped up in combine tractor cabs for a month. I'd defer it to December, please. Second. Okay, seconded by Ms. Berkson. Is there any comments, questions on the deferment, motion to defer till the to the... December meeting of ELUC. And if not, all those in favor of de the deferment, please say aye. 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 All, of they all opposed, if I could speak. Nay. Seeing none, okay, that is deferred, and we have one abstention, two, of course. Okay, we will then be move on to under 8C. The proposed public hearing to amend the Champaign County Zoning Ordinance to add hospital and or medical clinic as an additional principal use at a fairgrounds. And is there such a motion? I would move that we uh, amend the Moved by Mr. Weibel, seconded by Ms. Bergson. Discussion? Uh, John, did you want to say anything first? Well, so I can answer. I'll try to answer any questions okay. the committee has. Uh, and uh, we have several representatives of the Fair Association and Carl here tonight in case there's any questions. Okay. Uh, Mr. Weibel. John, can I summarize by saying why Carl wants more parking? Uh, actually, I think I think the the fair association also wants more. Okay, parking. well, Carla and the fair. Okay, more parking. Okay, mm -hmm. thank you, Miss Petrie. Uh, a couple of information questions um, with uh, adding more parking. Uh, who maintains uh, this parking area, and uh, where who covers the costs of it, and is there any rental that comes to the county? Uh, no, I mean, okay, there's the text amendment, and then there's the real-world situation of the Fair Association and Carl. Um, the parking is all on Fair Association land, and so Carl rents it. Carl and Fair. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Shore, did you? Oh, okay, I'm sorry. Mr. Weibel. Uh, drainage issues. Obviously, we're going from grass or gravel to pavement, I assume, is the, do we have to make a, a changes to the drainage system in the area or anything like that? Um, we, there will have to be stormwater detention, but more importantly, um, you know, there is, um, there's concern about runoff into Crystal Lake, mm -hmm. and I think I think probably that's runoff where, runoff from current conditions or in the future with the uh, runoff from current conditions and then okay. if we add more runoff in the future then th that would increase that concern. So is this going to be addressed or Yeah, that's why the uh, special condition number 3 is there. Uh, it's stated very generally. 
uh, and it's taken, the wording is taken from the land resource management plan, site design, land management, and stormwater management designs and practices shall provide effective site drainage, meet or exceed state and federal water quality standards, protect downstream drainage patterns, minimize impacts on adjacent properties, provide for stream flows that support healthy aquatic ecosystems, and wherever possible, preserve existing habitat and enhance degraded habitat. Now, that's a general wording based on our LRMP and intended to apply in general wherever this might be proposed. Any further comments, questions on this? So the microphone. Uh, yes, once, um, once this text amendment is in place, the Fair Association intends to apply for a new special use permit. And um, I've been told that, you know, in a large part, the site plan has already been prepared with uh, provisions for drainage and, um, you know, minimizing uh, water quality problems in Crystal Lake and possibly even the Saline Branch because part of the fairgrounds borders the saline branch. Um, so just as in 95, when there was a site plan for the current special use permit, there'll be a new site plan now, probably with a lot more detail. No, Ms. Burton, microphone. Uh, will the drainage be gray or green? Pipes or water gardens? Well, you know, the Fair Association property is, um, it's not built out, but it's, it's very well built up. So I imagine there'll be an interest in maximizing space for Fair Association use. Um, and the proposed parking is, it, it, as I understand it, is on the west side. The property drains to the east. Um, I don't know that they have a lot of open space they can use for open surface drainage. Um, our LRMP, all it says are the things that I read about, you know, protecting the environment. It doesn't say thou shall only use open drainage. Um, and I think decisions like that are best left to the landowner. Uh, so that's all I can say about that. Mr. Schrader. Maybe I'm off track here, but I have a question about the text amendment on this. When we're changing, <clears throat> we're amending the ordinance for the, the CR district. Um, why not just rezone the fair property? into more of an applicable area than changing the ordinance to accommodate and open up another use in the CR district. It is true that this is adding a new use to the CR district, but these conditions have been written to minimize that. I only know of one fairgrounds that had, were in existence in 1973, and that's the Champaign County Fair Association. Um, You know, with the, all the residential properties neighboring the fairgrounds to, I had originally proposed rezoning as a cure. Um, that was back in 2004. And the, my thinking since then has been that why go to a rezoning and raise all the concerns of all the property owners when all we need to do is really provide for this specific instance by means of a special use permit. Um, I, I think this is a less risky approach. It doesn't involve any rezoning. Um, it will absolutely have a site plan that will be very clear, uh, something that anybody can look at. Um, I really think this is the best alternative, but um, did you have a rezoning alternative in mind, John? 
I'm not being judgmental, John. I'm just asking information question. I, I yeah, I'm not. <laughs> I'm no way am I a planner or a director at planning or anything. So I was just getting your thought process to go through with this. And and the the other thing, I I guess, I, and, and I understand what you're saying, but I want to make another point too. I think, and the point <laughs> I'm going to make is. I think the handwriting's on the wall for the fairgrounds. Um, you know, I might ruffle some feathers, but it seems like Carl is getting bigger and eating property and getting larger, and that's fine. I'm not being judgmental or anything, but it just seems like, you know, the reason I made that point was because, you know, rezoning, I think the inevitability is there is what my point is. So I was just trying to get your thought process and everything. And, and I'm not, like I said, I'm not being judgmental, but... I, I just uh, want to make that extra point, point that out too. So, thank you. Well, I mean, as a former chair of the ZBA, I, I am always very interested in your opinion on these things, and I, I value it. So, um, I, I wasn't being, I didn't take your question as a negative question at all. Okay, because okay. it wasn't, John. It wasn't all. With all, all due respect, it, it wasn't. So I just. I appreciate hearing you too think out loud, so I appreciate it. Ms. Petrie. Um, but we sort of slipped by Ms. Berkson's uh, concern, and since there are people in the audience that I, to whom I can convey a message, um, I think her comment <coughs> is something that should be duly noted, and uh, I'm a little... Um, set back in the sense that you already have a site plan, which means you already assumed that this would fly through and would uh, encourage you to go back to your site plan and look at uh, implementing some green solutions to this because it's, it, it's going to be, there's nothing that I'm hearing will be permeable surface. It could be permeable surface on the parking area it could be a mixture of brick and grass. There are many ways that this could be done so that it doesn't become just another uh, stormwater wash. And um, I certainly would like to see that happen if this gets approved to move forward. And I probably am not going to support it this evening because I don't hear much willingness to uh, do anything that is showing that you're thinking about sustainability. Um, I don't want my comments that I made earlier to be misunderstood. I have not seen a site plan. I have not been told that there's a site plan that has been designed and is ready to go. That was not what I meant. Uh, in fact, we have talked specifically about, you know, uh, as this text amendment moves through the process and gets towards the end, there could actually be an application for a, a, a new special use permit, provided that any changes are necessary given the final text amendment. Um, now, given the concerns about water quality impacts, it is true that open drainage would be one way to deal with water quality impacts. Uh, and I've done all that I can to ensure that this text amendment supports the LRMP, implements it, in fact, and that's the way it's been drafted. Um, I guess that's, I just wanted to make that clear. Any other comments, questions before we vote on this? Seeing none, all in favor? Oh, Mr. One Trader. One second. I, I'm, see, I'm counting. We're missing Mr. Harper. Um, I'm a little concerned with, Ms., with what Ms. Petrie said because um, we're just dealing with this text amendment and um, we're, we're not looking at a finalized site plan or anything of that nature. So I'm, I'm a little concerned with what she said that she wouldn't support this, and this thing might just um, might just die right here in committee. I, I don't think it should. I just want to say I, I think it should go further 
and I think it should be supported. So um, I hope my colleagues will agree with me when we have this vote. Thank you. Mr. Shore. I do intend to vote for this tonight. I, I do think it's important that we continue this process and I, I agree with your concerns and I hope that they get addressed along the way and I believe we'll have opportunities to address them in the future. Ms. Berkson. Uh, microphone, please. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah. Do we have another bite? Is this, will we have an opportunity to look at the site plan and say yes or no to that? You will not. Um, this is fairgrounds are a special use permit of a type. There, there are some special use permits that the county board has to approve. Fairgrounds is not one. I'm not proposing to change that because prior to tonight, I had no reason to think that this would need county board approval. Uh, but I am getting direction from this committee. Um, this would not be the first special use permit approved by the county board, but I think one of the strengths of Champaign County zoning is that the ZBA has been given more discretion than any other ZBA I'm aware of in the state. Uh, that's worked since 1973. We have added two county board special use permits since 1973, one for the large rural residential subdivisions and one for wind farms. I failed to see why fairgrounds would need to join that group, but that's, I'm here for direction. Any other comments before we go ahead and vote? Okay, seeing none, all in favor of having the hearing on the text amendment, please signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, nay. nay. We have one nay. Thank you, that did pass. Okay, we will then move on to the monthly reports, which we have before us, the August and September 2015 reports. Any questions for John? Yeah. Oh, Ms. Petrie. Uh, um, just mostly uh, informational, I, I'm absolutely fascinated by the number of certificates that went through your office in August. That's, that's uh, the most ever that I've seen. So yeah. it's very impressive. Oh, the zoning uh, zoning compliance certificates. Yeah. Yes, I um, I was impressed by that too, uh, <laughs> because we did do you know a, not a great amount of permitting, but a fair amount of permitting. And um, August is always uh, yeah we were basically operating at four people on average because it's such a big vacation month. So yeah, um, that was quite a lot. Yeah, um, one thing I would like to point out, if I could, in September, you may have noted that under enforcement, uh, Susan Chavaria has finally been able to um, play a greater role in enforcement. That was because at the end of August into September, we had a lull in zoning cases, and, and Susan was able to get out and help with enforcement. Good. Uh, that did not last long as we saw another expansion of zoning cases towards the end of September and in October. And uh, just wanted to let you know that at the end of October, uh, we will have had 22 cases filed this year, oh. which uh, far exceeds what we had last year and is on par with what we had in 13. So in terms of zoning cases, it's been a big year. Yeah. But uh, the cases came in such a way that Susan was able to make a real meaningful contribution on enforcement. And uh, I've, I've pointed that out to the ZBA and I wanted to point it out to the committee here tonight. Oh, that's wonderful. Yes, thanks, thanks for that news, John. Um, any other questions? And if not, we will receive and place these on file as presented. Uh, is there any other business then to come before this committee from any of the members or Ms. Petrie? 
Um, I have two um, because I have received a communication from a citizen of the county, and John knows about it because I shared it with him, but I think in case that individual is watching our meeting, um, an update on the progress on burning, and then an information question of, to John, do you still have one intern uh, in your office, or have you been able to add a second one? Uh, regarding the intern, we still only have one. We have not added a second. Um, now, did you want an update about the burning ordinance, or? Yeah, it was mostly for that citizen, so. Okay, well, uh, Susan did reply, because Susan is doing most of the work on the burning ordinance. Um, obviously, we don't have a proposal for the committee to review. Um, well, the minutes also said it would, you, you do a report this time. Um, so we may, we may have a concrete proposal by December, but, um, I, I wouldn't want anybody to think that that's going to be guaranteed. Okay. Any other business? Chair's report, other than just saying thanks to everyone for coming out on kind of a dreary evening, although it is nice temperatures for this time of year. Uh, seeing, move on then to designation of items to be placed on consent agenda. Let's have none. And is there a motion to adjourn? Moved by Mr. Shore, seconded by Ms. Berkson. We're adjourned. <laughs> Thanks.